Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Sunday afternoon, August 20th. We have a lot going on in the tropics. Sure feels like the peak of the hurricane season. We have Tropical Storm Hillary making landfall in northern Mexico and SoCal right now. We have Invest 91L, which will likely develop as it heads toward Texas and Mexico over the next couple of days. We have Tropical Storm Franklin, newly formed in the Caribbean, likely to impact Hispaniola and move into the southwestern Atlantic. We have Tropical Depression 6, which is not likely to live very long. And we have Tropical Storm Emily off your screen on the right, which is not a threat to land. And we may have more storms developing within the next couple of weeks as the pattern remains active on the Atlantic side of things. So we're going to start off with Tropical Storm Hillary now making landfall over the northern Baja Peninsula. The tight little center is right here at the beginning of the loop and scoots up the, the northern side of the peninsula later on in the loop. So we are seeing uh, the hurricane warnings and tropical storm warnings along this stretch of coastline, the core of strongest winds, has moved up the Baja Peninsula, and we've seen rain since yesterday spreading over large swaths of California, Nevada, and Arizona. We are seeing winds starting to pick up in some of the flatter lands in southwestern Arizona. I've seen gusts as high as 45 or 50 miles per hour in some of the reports, and we will see gusty winds spread over this region, especially at high elevations and even deep into Nevada as the storm is moving quickly and will not fully dissipate uh, before it gets deeply inland. But wind is not the primary impact we're concerned about with Hillary. We're concerned mostly about the rainfall that is falling over an area of the country that doesn't typically receive a lot of rain, especially during the dry hot summer. This ground cannot handle a lot of water too fast, and so even a few inches of rain quickly falling over this area will cause flash flooding issues, and so there are high risks of dangerous impacts from that. This is the radar picture currently from the National Weather Service showing that rain is falling here over most of southwestern California, including the Metro Belt light to moderate rain generally over this area, but we are starting to see some bands of thunderstorms developing due to daytime heating this afternoon as of this recording, and some of those heavier bands of thunderstorms could cause flash flooding in these desert areas and those communities as we get deeper into the evening and overnight. All of this rain will continue spreading northward, and we expect a large swath of the southwestern U.S. and all of this mountainous terrain to receive a lot of rainfall and localized impacts due to that topography will be very important for determining how severe the flooding is uh, for a particular location. This is the National Hurricane Center official forecast showing the accelerating track inland here. And again, this white cone does not denote where impacts are felt. For example, the wind field is much larger than that white cone outlined here in orange. So gusty winds translating northward along this track over a wide area. Tropical storm warnings remain in effect beyond Long Beach in California and all along the coastline of the northern Baja Peninsula and the Gulf of California. And again, the rainfall and flooding, primary concern here, high risk from the Weather Prediction Center has been issued over a portion of Southern California extending across the border into Nevada and moderate risk, which is still significant, extends in red deeper into Nevada and includes the metro areas of LA and San Diego widespread elevated risk of potential flooding all the way up into the northern Rockies as the remnants continue to accelerate northward. And again, this could be significant in some areas depending on exactly how the rain bands set up. Predicting flooding at a, at a detailed level is difficult, but this communicates that the risk is elevated and it will be very locally dependent on exactly where you are. So please pay attention to what your local emergency management officials are saying and your local National Weather Service forecast office will have more details for where you are. Please stay safe and be smart as the storm rolls through. I'm gonna switch over to the big view again now and go to the Atlantic side of things. Again, we have several systems. We're gonna talk about the one closest to uh, the United States first. This is Indivest 91L. In the Eastern Gulf of Mexico, we'll take a very zoomed in view here. Here's the Florida Peninsula outlined in orange to the right of your screen. And we're seeing this wave axis continue to march westward, and it looks a little bit more organized than it has the last couple of days. We're starting to see hints of convective banding, this kind of striping pattern curving in toward this area down here. Now, we do not yet have a closed low-level circulation. We can tell that by looking at some of the low-level clouds, which aren't moving a whole lot here. Mostly northerly winds, very light in some of the gaps that we see. There are southeasterly winds over here, but we're not seeing a lot of evidence of systematic westerlies on the south side. We would need to see that in order to conclude that this has a closed, well-defined circulation. This scatterometer pass is about six hours old now as of this recording, uh, but it showed kind of a similar thing here with southeasterlies turning into north-north 
easterlies, denoting that wave axis, but again, no westerlies closing off the south side, so we don't have a well-defined circular rotation of wind yet, uh, but that may happen eventually as this crosses the Gulf of Mexico, as conditions will remain generally favorable for gradual organization of this system as it crosses. This is the European model showing the surface wind forecast. Here's the trough axis here, southeasterlies to northeasterlies. So you can see that belt there, that wind shift. This will continue to translate across the Gulf, and you'll see a gradual sharpening of that wave axis, and then it arrives close to the mouth of the Rio Grande here on Tuesday morning or Tuesday afternoon, and we may see a closing off of the circulation just before landfall. That has been pretty consistent on most of these model forecasts. The GFS, just a little bit better defined here with a tropical storm vortex closing off just east of Brownsville. And this has been, again, pretty consistent on these forecasts. And there's no reason to uh, depart significantly from this expectation right now. It looks like the wave is gradually organizing, but not rapidly. One thing we want to watch for in terms of any surprises is whether we do get a closed circulation earlier than models expect and we get some sort of tight core of rotating wind in the center of this thing. Right now everything's very spread out, broad, and winds are generally light at 20 to 25 miles per hour at a maximum. If that changes very quickly, uh, then we'll need to watch for quicker development earlier than currently expected. But right now, don't see a reason to doubt that we'll see something like this, a last minute tropical depression or storm formation prior to arrival in South Texas or Northern Mexico, hopefully mostly beneficial in terms of bringing rain to areas that need it, but something to keep in mind uh, coastal areas may see elevated winds as this comes in, regardless of its level of development. And again, that will be early or midday Tuesday that we'll be watching for that coming in. I'm going to switch over now to the Central Atlantic. So this is the Eastern Caribbean on your screen, Lesser Antilles. And we have a, a few storms here. A couple don't matter. This is Tropical Storm Emily, has been named by the National Hurricane Center. This will remain out to sea and is not a threat to land and won't look very organized either as it's fighting wind shear and conditions are generally hostile. Uh, so this will not be much of a storm uh, that will concern anything other than shipping. Uh, the Tropical Depression 6 also formed, uh, according to the National Hurricane Center, yesterday. And as we talked about in yesterday's video, this is fighting a lot of wind shear. You can see convective outflow from the other storm to its west, kind of pushing right over this, pushing all the thunderstorms off to the east. The low-level center is well offset from those thunderstorms, and dissipation is a likely outcome within the next day or so. This will gradually make its way toward the Leeward Islands, but there won't be much left of it, if anything, by the time it arrives. Most of the heavy weather is being caused by Franklin, which is the other storm that has most recently formed. As of the start of my recording, we got the first advisory from the National Hurricane Center for Tropical Storm Franklin. We'll shift over there to the zoomed in visible view. This is the coastline of Colombia and Venezuela down here. And the tip of the Dominican Republic is up here on your screen. And some of the Lesser Antilles are up here to the upper right of your screen. Franklin has formed, and we have evidence for that in the visible imagery from earlier in the day. At the beginning of the loop, you could see a slightly exposed low-level circulation rather tightly wrapped, bringing in westerlies on the south side, and that was confirmed by reconnaissance aircraft in the last couple of hours, which ran through one pass here, found uh, northwesterlies, and then strong southeasterlies on the right-hand side, up to 45 or 50 mile per hour winds, and then they came around and did another pass through, and they found, again, a wind shift from northeasterlies to westerlies on the south side, confirming that there is a closed low-level circulation that is well-defined, and so this is now a tropical storm with assessed maximum winds of about 45 miles per hour at the moment, and this will likely continue gradually organizing. Again, there is some wind shear. If you assess the visible loop, you'll note that the low-level center is near the northwestern side, of the deep ball of textured convection on this loop, and most of the deep moisture and rainfall is well off to the east. And this is because the low level flow is, is generally out of the east or southeast, which is why the cyclone is moving toward the northwest. Uh, but the upper level winds, which you can see in the Feathery Cirrus here, are more out of the south or southwest. That adds up to a vertical shear vector out of the northwest, which is pushing all of the thunderstorm activity to the southeast of the low level center. That will likely continue, and the system is currently tilted with the low-level center here and the mid-level trough axis uh, further off to the east due to that shear. So this is a fairly disorganized tropical storm, but the trend is upward in terms of organization, which is why it has formed today. 
If we look at the model expectations for this, uh, the environment will continue to be marginal, uh, but not hostile enough to prevent further intensification of Franklin. So if you look at the GFS upper level wind pattern, you'll see the belt of westerlies, hence the shear. There's where Franklin is now. And there's a couple of troughs. There's an upper level trough over the southeastern Bahamas, and there's another one off of the Carolinas, which is going to dive down over the Bahamas and reinforce this first one, as we talked about yesterday. And so we're going to see an ushering of Franklin toward the north, because as this, as this trough digs in, it starts to accelerate uh, a southerly steering flow toward Hispaniola, which drags Franklin and its moisture up over the island. And uh, this will likely be a heavy rainfall event uh, for Hispaniola, uh, D Dominican Republic, and Haiti. And then things get a, a little complicated here because this big trough is going to start backing away, but we're going to have persistent wind shear over the storm. It's going to be interacting with the high topography of Hispaniola, which is highly disruptive to tropical systems. And it will be a question mark as to what exactly shows up on the other side of the island. We're expecting a tropical storm strength vortex coming in. Right now, Hurricane Center has winds of 65 miles per hour at landfall in the Dominican Republic in a couple of days. After crossing over, it may get heavily disrupted for a while. There is, in theory, a way that this simply dissipates due to wind shear after being blown apart by the topography, but there has been a model trend over the last 24 hours toward Franklin surviving after crossing over Hispaniola and meandering around here in the southwestern Atlantic. This trough will continue to impart a southwesterly steering flow, which would likely push this off toward the northeast, and then it's a question of whether the environment improves or not. What we'll see is that one more trough digs in near the Bahamas on some of these model runs, and eventually uh, Franklin ends up on the eastern side of this trough. The upper level wind switches from westerly to south southeasterly, and the shear goes down as a result. So we actually see intensification on some of these runs, and this moves up in the vicinity of Bermuda within a week. Lots of uncertainty in this kind of outcome, but we are seeing more models come on board with something similar to that kind of story. This is the mid-level moisture plot from the GFS just to show that as this moves west through the Caribbean, you'll, con you'll continue to see the low-level center to the western side of most of the deep moisture as we continue to have westerly shear causing that tilt. This moves up toward Hispaniola, and you do see some intensification on the modeling now, which is consistent with what we're seeing in live satellite trends. This lower level circulation is vigorous and will likely survive and intensify some. So again, tropical storm in the Dominican Republic crossing over and remaining present and surviving again on the GFS, continuing to be sheared for a couple of days. And then as it turns toward the north, we get intensification as the shear vector lessens and the environment becomes less hostile and we have a bona fide hurricane south of Bermuda in a week. If we look at the ensembles, uh, we see a similar cloud of solutions. A lot of ensemble members have a similar outcome to this forecasted here on the GFS ensemble. And if I go to the European ensemble really quick, you will see a similar outcome. Not every member, there's 51 members, but a fair fraction of them here, maybe 20, 25 of them, uh, have a significant hurricane now developing in the southwestern Atlantic after six or seven days. Uncertainty really grows at this range, so again, not a lot of details we can say here in terms of where this might go, uh, but there is a risk that the steering flow may take it up in the general direction of Bermuda at some point, so it might be something to keep an eye on as we get deeper into next week. For now, the main risk is going to be the rainfall associated with this as it passes over Hispaniola. You can see a belt of very heavy rains, many inches, some, some uh, amounts over a foot of rain in the Dominican Republic as this passes over. We might clip Puerto Rico with some of this rain, but right now the forecast track would keep the bulk of it over Hispaniola instead, where intense flash flooding and mudslides and landslides are unfortunately possible with any tropical system that passes over. There's always uh, impacts like that associated with the heavy rainfall. This is the National Hurricane Center forecast track, showing again that turn to the north early Tuesday, and then by midday Tuesday and Tuesday night, moving into the Dominican Republic, the exact landfall point may shift around, uh, but ultimately what will matter most is the rainfall near and east of the track. The west side will be a little bit drier due to the wind shear, keeping that side uh, full of less heavy weather than the eastern side will be. Tropical storm watch over the entire southern coastline, as again, tropical storm force winds of 40 miles per hour or stronger uh, will be possible uh, as the storm makes landfall. Currently expected to cross over and then strengthen further into a hurricane by the National Hurricane Center due to the conditions we discussed, potentially getting more favorable, assuming that Hispaniola doesn't severely disrupt the circulation 
upon it crossing over. That will remain an uncertainty for a couple of days yet, but once we see it across uh, Hispaniola, we'll likely have a pretty good idea of its future at that time. That's about it for our discussion today. Lots of systems to track over the next few days. Expect continued videos from me, assuming that I can wake up early enough to record them. That's it for now. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching.